If you are watching right now and you are considering dying by your hands, dying by suicide from lethal emotional pain, stop, breathe. In four seconds through your nose, eight seconds out through your mouth, pursed lips like a whistle but no sound. Do that a few times. Take a minute. You are intended to be here. You're intended to be here until your natural end. Suicide is not the solution to your problem. It is the problem. And if you are in that deathly lethal emotional pain, I need you to take a moment, find someone, anyone willing to empathize with your pain, tell the truth about that pain, maybe for the first time in your entire life. A pain shared is a pain halved. You deserve this life. You are beautiful just as you are. You are a thousand times greater than the worst thing you've ever done. You can defeat this pain. You can find a better tomorrow, but you gotta be here to get there in the first place. If you're in crisis right now and you're contemplating taking your life, I want you to consider dialing the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. Plus one for military servicemen and women. We want you, all of us here at this table, everyone who loves you, want you to stay here, but not for us. Stay here for you. Find the will to survive the pain and change your life. And you can always find a way to live. We love you. You're intended to be here. You're a gift to this world. Thank you for watching. You know, there's a don't ask, don't tell uh, that's pervasive in the world. Suicidal thinking, insidious inner critical thought, and depression, I think, are the greatest liars we know. We just don't have that resource to feel comfortable enough to reach out to talk about it. Compassion is dying in the world. Find a way through the pain to have hope. And when you can find hope in the darkest of your hours, you can find purpose. He got tearful because he felt relief because for that moment, he didn't feel alone. In that moment, in, in the seven words, you gave me permission to be open about my pain. You're so caring, and that's the connection that we all crave when we feel alone. We cannot sit and wait mm -hmm. for someone to balance our mental health. We have to go out, mm -hmm. we have to fight tooth and nail, and we have to use the will to find a way to survive the pain. My main tool was going into the dark night of the soul and keeping them company. Your message was so strong that I felt like you were other than there with me. Gratitude and resilience are two of the greatest leading factors in preventing suicide. A family are the people in the world who see good, value, a future for us. Our job is to find that family if you weren't born into it. Hello, I'm Dr. Mark Goulston. I'm a medical doctor trained as a psychiatrist, and for over 20 years, I was a boots-on-the-ground suicide specialist. One of my first mentors was a fellow named Dr. Edwin Schneiderman, and he was a pioneer in the study of suicide. He was the founder of something called the American Association of Suicidology, and he mentored me at UCLA, and he taught me a lot about suicide. In fact, one of his favorite questions when he would be with people is, where does it hurt and how much? And he just helped them talk. But one of the reasons I'm really glad to be here is that when I was in medical school, I reached the low point, and the school actually wanted to kick me out because they were losing money on people who took leaves of absences. And then the dean of students, who cared about students more than money, stepped in, and he was an angel. I literally mean that. And he stepped in, and he saw a future for me. He saw, he saw goodness in me. He saw a purpose for me. He saw worth in me that I couldn't see. And he went to bat for me and it changed everything. So the Dean of Students was an angel in my life. I think he was sent to save my life, even though I didn't think my life was worth saving. And he saw worth in me, he saw, 
He saw value in me, he saw a future for me. Um, he, he basically said, you have goodness in you and the world needs that goodness and you don't know how much they need it and you won't need it till you're 35, but you have to make it till you're 35 and you deserve to be on this planet and you're gonna let me help you. And so what happened is I then proceeded to work with people and I seemed to be successful and my main tool was empathy. My main tool was going into the dark night of the soul and keeping them company which caused them to cry with relief and we just stayed there until that relief somehow led to hope. But I didn't know how to do that for other people. And so one of the reasons I'm really glad to be here is I figured out what, what I did and what that Dean did for me in steps that we're going to talk about later so that everybody can do that. So anybody who's afraid of where their loved ones are uh, can reach them. You know, there's a don't ask, don't tell uh, that's pervasive in the world. And, it's, and good people want to ask, but they're afraid they won't know what to do. They're afraid that they'll make the situation worse. And together, we're going to teach them how not only not to make the situation worse, but to save lives. You know, I'm from, originally from Tokyo, Japan, and Japan is the number two capital of suicide, you know. Um, and we just don't have that resource to feel comfortable enough to reach out to talk about it. Before you're a doctor, you're human. You're so caring. And that's the connection that we all crave when we feel alone. So <clears throat> I'm trying not to get too emotional right now already I, I'm, because I'm feeling so much. You know, it's, it's you. fascinating what you're saying because I think what you're saying points to what I think is a pandemic, and the pandemic is compassion is dying in the world. People are afraid to feel compassion, and they're good people, but people are afraid to feel compassion because a lot of people think, if I feel compassion, I'm going to have to let go of my agenda. I'm going to have to let go of all the things that I'm chasing after, which are meaningless and empty, but I'm going to have to let go of them. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so what I think happened is you may have picked up something, my story of compassion towards me, for my dean, uh, the dean of students, and I think you got emotional because you could feel, you, it's like you were saying, you know, Mark, the world is starving for compassion, and we've got to make time for it because people are just dying because they don't have it. You know, with that, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to introduce Kevin. <laughs>